in Crystal Springs, Mississippi in 1896, left home around 1912 with an older woman and traveled north to Rolling Fork, then settled farther north by Boyle near the Dockery Farm in 1913, right on the line of the Peavine Special, where he spent a year or two studying with Charlie Patton, Willie Brown, Dick Bankston, Ben Marie and them at Dockery's, and then returned south to Crystal Springs and his family and the peoples who used to know him. By this time, Tommy Johnson had developed a style of his own, not just in his music, but as a compulsive womanizer, an acute alcoholic who would drink almost anything, sterno, shoe polish, the works. His brother, Liddell, asked him how he had learned to play so well in such a short time. He said the reason he knowed so much said he sold himself to the devil. I asked him how. And Tommy Johnson said, if you want to learn how to play anything you want to play and learn how to make songs yourself, you take your guitar and you go to where a road crosses that way, where a crossroads is. Be sure to get there just a little before 12 o'clock that night so you know you'll be there. You have your guitar and be playing a piece, sitting there by yourself. You have to go by yourself and be sitting there playing a piece. A big black man will walk up there and take your guitar and he'll tune it. And then he'll play a piece and hand it back to you. That's the way I learned how to play anything I want. And Bob Palmer adds, the black man referred to is recognizable as Legba, a Yoruba trickster god who opens the path for other supernatural powers and is traditionally associated with crossroads. As the only wholly unpredictable deity in the Yoruba pantheon, the rituals that are virtually guaranteed to bring a desired result from all others do not always work in his case. Legba became identified with the devil of Christianity.